is insane. Like this, can't believe this. Let's hop out of the car because he thought we were going to roll it. Right? Does just put a call <laughs> the radio for help. Lost a moment of concentration and he's gone down over the edge of the bank. Have you ever heard of Gunshot Creek car? They're basically that to do. I can't believe this track we've stumbled across out here. We are off on our yearly Christmas holiday trip. Made the drive from our home yesterday all the way through to this Goldburn River National Park, which you've never been to before. We arrived here about dinner time last night in the pouring rain. We got nailed by a storm yesterday afternoon and sat under our awnings there for a few hours and then went to bed in the rain, but has cleared up this morning. Got some sunshine out, which is good. The weather's still a bit all over the place today and then maybe a little bit tomorrow and then it's sort of clearing up for the few days after that. Now we were meant to go to the Victorian high country this trip but they closed the border about three days before we were meant to go. So we're just kind of making up a bit of a plan in New South Wales. We're not too sure what we're doing. We're starting out here and then we're going to go down through the back of Lithgow, uh, Kapiti, over to Orange through all those areas and then back down into maybe the Abercrombie River National Park and then down the south coast or something but who knows we'll see what happens. First time I've ever been to this national park there's not really any four wheel driving in here it's just a dirt road into some nice couple of nice big campgrounds here on the river. The river is absolutely filthy at the moment from all the storms it's risen up and it's all sort of flooded down there. Still a beautiful spot here it was just a bit of a overnight one for us come check it out because we haven't been here we're packing up now and then we're gonna head on out of here and head down towards uh, Mount Airy I think we're gonna go to today. left that Goldburn River National Park this morning, made our way down to Kapiti, sort of came through Rylstone and that, we had a bit of lunch, and in the town of Kapiti we've headed out to Mount Airlie and Mount Janolan, a few different tracks out here to explore which I've never actually done before, so out sort of Janolan Point Roadway at the moment, um, just yeah, there's not heaps of tracks out here but there is a few, there's the main hectic one out the Mount, uh, uh, Mount Janolan Point or whatever it is. We may check that out later. I don't know if we'll drive it because Dad definitely can't take his car up there. So it'll be a sol solo mission for me and probably be some uh, decent amount of winching involved. So Kai might not be keen for that. But yeah, it's a beautiful drive out through here, through this bush area and you're coming up between the big uh, cliffs and the big rock faces and that. Just sort of head out here and see what we can find. Always good to explore these new spots. Sun's shining, it's been a nice day so far.
Can't complain about this for a spot. What a view on this track we were doing. It's sort of because you originally come up this mountain, then you sort of cruising around the top of it. And this one was following the edge, and then it just comes to this absolutely spectacular lookout here. So cool. Love these sorts of places. There's even a little camp spot up there where you could have a camp tonight. These mountain ranges that stretch from sort of Blue Mountains all the way way out the back of Lithgow where we are now are just such a unique and awesome spot of Australia. You never, I don't know, you never really see mountain ranges of this particular kind everywhere, anywhere else. Just this sort of rock face, massive sheer drops everywhere. <laughs> Just doing some exploring out these tracks out here now, but well, some of these views, unreal. We spotted a little side track where we pulled up in a car park and then we spotted a little walking track off that car park and it's brought us down here about, maybe about 100 metres and through the sort of canyon between the rocks and now we're wedged down here between these rocks following this little stream, it's pretty cool. Well, why is there a ladder there? That is not trustworthy. Yeah. Kinda. I mean, it's decent, it's decent. Could be worse, could be worse. Good luck. You got the right footwear on for it. I think we came to the end of it pretty cool. We sort of, you can follow that walk just out along there a little bit. Tiny little waterfall here we're standing at the top of, but you have to sort of climb down to continue along a little bit. Made out the end of this Janolan Point Road, well not the end, but <laughs> where the last K or so of the hectic fall driving begins. Oh, puffed. Let's park down the bottom, then you got this, and then it starts with big rock steps. <sighs> this track is hectic, we're sort of walking up a fair bit of it, just monster rock step. Look at this one here, I've seen this on video several times, so I sort of knew all about this stuff. There's no way I'm taking my car up here at 5.30 in the afternoon by myself when it's also, these rocks are still wet from the rain. I can already see probably two or three spots I'm going to be winching. Kind of walked up to the top of this track. It does continue out there. Um, we're kind of at the highest point, I think. Continues out there, possibly to a lookout or something just through there. We won't keep walking. We've sort of walked up all the hectic bits I always see filmed. And then what a view from up here. Not a bad spot to be on a Tuesday afternoon. No big storms coming in yet, which is good. And this wind isn't too bad we'll probably head back down off here in a minute and maybe have a swim in one of those little creeks to freshen up because I haven't had a swim for I left home yesterday morning so I don't really want to go to bed tonight all dirty and we'll try and find a camp somewhere <laughs> It's actually a little waterfall just on the side of the track here. That's probably only flowing because of all the rain we've had. I'm going to chuck my swimmers on and go for a little cool down underneath it. How is it? Stand under it. What a cool little spot this was. Not a bad little drop off it there too and it actually quite hurts when you're standing underneath it though. Anyways, we'll go find ourselves a camp.
I don't know where to find Cam now, and I thought it'd sort of crawl up out of that easy, but that's just like that black slosh in there. That's like Tassie mud or something. <laughs> that just went all which direction everywhere then. Kai's hopped out of the car because he thought we are going to roll it. And then see like the back end lift up when I sort of tried to... Kai's panicked, he hopped out, he thought we are going to die. Might have to go back to the other to the other spot. I think we'll bail back to the other spot for Cam rather than try and take on who knows what's going to happen out this way at 7 o'clock. Classic car up to his old tricks. We're nearly camping. <laughs> Let's just put a call <laughs> the radio for help. Lost a moment of concentration and he's gone down over the edge of the bank a bit and I don't think he can drive from where he is or he's gonna go. A few soft shackles. Now the pulley block, so I'm gonna have to pulley block him off the tree back up, uh, back straight back off the side of the truck. It's not too bad where he is at the moment, but that ground's soft after all this rain. If that back wheel, it can't move without slipping, and then he's just going to start slipping down over there, which you don't want. We've uh, pulley blocked him up to that tree. We'll hop back in the car and get out of the way, and then that'll pull the front back up towards that tree. All right, are you ready to go? Yeah, I just need me break off a bit, and uh, I'll get ready to crawl a bit here, and you'll lure me up there, Smith. But you're just going to pull me sideways anyway, aren't you? Yeah, I probably wouldn't drive. I'd just see if we can literally drag that car sideways. That made for an exciting moment to get into camp. I need another swim. I'm sweating again now, but that was just the winch. A couple of soft shackles and then that little pulley block thing from Drifter. Just so we could pull him straight back up off the tree. And also, then I'm not directly connected to him. So if he goes, I'm not going as well. I'll get pulled back up towards the tree. Like I tried to rear it a bit and it rolled off that rock at the rear and I thought, oh no, I'm not in a great spot here. <laughs> bit of excitement for us for the afternoon. <laughs> yeah, I don't think, oh, you weren't driving out of that. You probably, like the front would have started going out but the back was going down. Yeah. Got a nice flat grassy area up here and then we got a view out over there, awesome spot for a camp. <laughs> Sunset to hear out over the mountains. It's good to settle in for our first proper night on this trip. I don't have last night sitting under the awnings in the pouring rain really counted. been such a beautiful night here we didn't get any rain and that wind dropped right off just cooking a little bit of breakfast now taking it easy soaking in the views fire pits always seem to be such a big one with people leaving rubbish in and particularly cans and glass and that but I don't know it's best to just bring a bag and pick up a few bits and pieces where you can. This is my first trip away using the train canopy since I got it, because I only just got it before Christmas and this is only start of January. It definitely makes a big difference with camping, particularly in the rain, how you can just keep all your stuff in here out of the mud, dust, rain. And you got these like little shelters for when it's raining as well. It's just a lot easier to use, immediately noticing. I do have to carry the ladder with me now to get up into the Rift type tam, it's not a big deal. 
It is a big deal. It is? Yep. Folds up nice and small, but yeah, I used to climb in up over the tub. I still sort of could climb up in there, but it'd be a little bit difficult. It's easier to use this. And you can set it up so it go in the back or the side, but here's easier, then it's not in the way of the canopy. Over this side, I've just got the fridge here. I've got like my axe and saw and a couple of bits and pieces in the side here. Fridge is obviously on a slide. It's got room there to put all my basic utensils and that for when I'm using the fridge and making a bit of food. Put the table there so nothing can sort of slide down onto the fridge when I pull it in and out, that stops it. And then here I just put my bedding. And over this side I just put my alley box there with all my kitchen gear and everything in it. Then I just sort of, this is a bit messy here, I just chuck bags and recovery gear and tools and bits and pieces. Obviously after this trip we're going to try and organise a proper setup for this, how we're going to manage it all. But it still works really well even as is, but it'd be good to get sort of maybe a drawer somewhere and a couple of dividers and that. Yeah. Do you want to film your umbrella test that you made? No. For, um, Not yet. We have to see if it works and we'll do the test again. Yeah, but you got to get the prototype development testing phase filming in. Okay, and then people know to buy your product. Okay. It's a one-off, is it? How much are you selling it for? 70 grand. Okay, so if anyone wants a... <laughs> if anyone wants an umbrella that Kai's made, it's just $70,000. And how'd you make it? Leaves. Leaves and tape. And then what am I going to do? Tip water on you? Yeah. Not too much. Pretty good. I look, I'm fine. Like I, I, I'm getting a little bit wet, but that's for the side drips. You need, you need to make it a little bit bigger than it works. After we packed up camp and headed down out of that area, we ducked back into Kapiti, where we got some fuel. Then we headed back out the other side, out through Turon Gates on Upper Turon River Road or something it is. And we're making our way through to Safala, I think, Safala, yeah, something like that. Uh, I've never been through this area before, it's just sort of a main dirt road. It's a beautiful country drive through here. Now, the rivers are up a lot because of the rain and you have to cross the river further out here to get through. So could be interesting when we get to that river crossing. See what happens when we get there. Hopefully we can get across. Pretty beautiful drive through the countryside here, not so much four wheel drive and just dirt road, a few water crossings, but now I've made it to this uh, where we actually have to cross the river. Definitely moving through there, I don't know. Might have to go for a walk across and see. I think we can make it, it's not that deep, it's just flowing very fast. And that concrete causeway is quite slippery, so I'm just thinking if the car starts to slip at all, just slide off it. I don't really have much experience with fast flowing water. I've done plenty of river river crossings and you know deeper stuff and that but that's sort of real fast moving i just haven't had much experience with it so just a bit unsure and if you start to slide then you're going off down to the river and that's your car gone which it's a fair risk when you're a little bit uncertain we're gonna have some lunch here and see if anyone else comes maybe who knows more about it than me and they can drive across it or say it's uh unsafe You ready to uh, die? Oh, yeah. Are you nervous? Take a seatbelt off in case you need to quickly get out. Mom, and your windows down you too. Make, you make well, me right scared. Yeah, I'm in low. Dad, you're freaking me out more. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's no need for uh, seatbelts or anything, and we will uh, go slow. And... It's all good, most of it's going under the car. It's definitely got the heart rate up down this far. People are probably watching this laugh and everything and geez, you get across that in a two-wheel drive but I just haven't done stuff like this before so it makes me nervous. But yeah, that was quite easy. <laughs> There's no issues there. We just kind of mucked around, had a bit of lunch and uh, yeah, wait to see and then we went for it. That's yeah. coming across now. Not a problem. Yeah. 
It was easy as in the end. People were probably laughing at us, worried about going across there. Oh, we're across that. Very freaked out about nothing in the end, but you just don't want to end up with a car down a river. <laughs> Only a few hundred meters up over the hill down the other side and straight into another one. This one's not as um, bad and be more confident after the last one anyway. This one's probably slightly deeper, but it's not flowing fast anywhere near as fast. It's only got a light flow rate or whatever you want to call it on it. So yeah, we'll be all good on this one for sure. Except I nearly slipped over. <laughs> Right into this next one. You see me there nearly slipping over trying to walk. That was all, I was a bit worried on the last one, just how slippery it is. It's like slime on the bottom of these. Still going low range, <coughs> even though we're on the concrete, just so we've got all four wheels gripping and driving. Dad comes through as I come out. You don't really want two cars out in the middle of the river at the same time. After we came across those couple of river crossings, we went to go continue the main way into Safala, but we came to an, another one which was just, yeah, well out. It was, yeah, quite dangerous. It was like nearly waist deep and just ra racing through there. So we sort of went the long way around. It wasn't too bad. We came into Safala. I don't even know, is it Safala? I haven't actually even looked what it's called, but something like that. And now we're... How's this for a view in a spot? We sort of come out of town a bit, out towards like a couple of campgrounds, Ration Point and Greens Point or something like that. There's actually a couple of drops of rain coming down now. Heaps of campgrounds, a few little tracks around the hill here. We're just out exploring this one now, which is a pretty awesome spot. Dad's just come up here as well. He was down the bottom having a look around while I came up here. And we just had a shower. Rain came through, come through. But I think we are going to camp up on the top here. A few storms around, a little bit of wind. It's kind of weird. We are a little bit protected on this hill here. And it's got beautiful views. And there's um, a heap of firewood around as well. There wasn't really any, any firewood around at the bottom camps. I might get a nice big warm fire going and cook some dinner up here. We missed out on going to the high country this trip, but we've been finding some bloody awesome mountain spots so far. It's so nice up here and this cooler weather in the middle of summer and you get a breeze up here and just sort of nice and cool. It keeps all the bugs away. There's no mozzies or sand flies or flies or anything. It's just absolutely beautiful up here. And we got the whole place to ourselves. We always sort of <laughs> head away up a track as far as we can. There's main campground sort of down in the area, down the valley there, but we're up here on our own. How nice is this sunset? Is it good to finally? Yeah. Definitely this. Packed up camp and 